Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Eloy. In this video, I want to try to teach you the player rules for Free Leagues Alien, the role-playing game. This video is part of a series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, check the playlist and start at number one. Today we're going to talk about environmental and physical hazards in the Alien RPG. We'll start with vacuum. When you are exposed to vacuum, you make a stamina roll every round. The roll doesn't require an action, but must be rolled before doing anything else in the round. The roll is an unmodified it the roll is unmodified in the first round, but then gets a cumulative negative one modification for every subsequent round. So it's minus one on the second round, minus two on the third round, and so on. A failed roll means that you drop to zero health, become broken, and must make a death roll every round until you die or you enter a pressurized area. You do not suffer a critical injury. Uh, note that uh, a single slow action and a successful mobility roll are required to climb, climb into a spacesuit very quickly, assuming that you have one nearby. Explosive decompression. If a shot misses its target in a room with an outer bulkhead, the weapon will inflict its base damage on the bulkhead instead. Roll an armor rating of the bulkhead, which is typically an armor rating of 6 in civilian ships. If the armor roll fails to stop the shot, it will penetrate the bulkhead. Air in the room will vent out into space in a turn. The intense draft will require everyone to make a stamina roll as a fast action to perform any other actions. Falling. Falling damage equals the height of the fall in meters divided by 2, rounding down. If you are doing a controlled jump, roll mobility. Each 6 result in the mobility roll reduces your damage by 1, and armor also protects you from falling damage. Explosions. The force of an explosion is measured in blast power. For each person within short range of the blast when the detonation occurs, roll base dice equal to the blast power rating of the explosive. For every six rolled, the victim suffers one point of damage. This roll cannot be pushed, and victims at engaged range from the detonation suffer one extra point of damage. Effect radius. Charges which have a blast power of 7 or more can harm people up to medium range. So we just described a normal explosions of blast power 6 or less. It's only short range and engaged range. But now, if you have an explosive of blast power 7 or more, you can extend that damage up to medium range. And for victims within short or engaged, it follows the rules described above, but for the victims who are now at medium range, the blast power is effectively redu reduced by 6. So, say you have a blast power of 8, uh, the people within engaged and short range uh, uh, receive damage according to a roll of uh, blast power 8, but those victims up to medium range only suffer the effects of 8 minus 6, 2. 2 blast power. If there are many people within medium range of the blast, the GM can choose to roll one time and apply the result to all victims. Again, uh, armor... Uh, it doesn't specifically say if armor applies, so I would suppose that one might look at the specific weapon descriptions and figure out if armor applies to this. Um, Next up is fire. Fire is measured in intensity, which is similar to the way blast power works. A typical fire has an intensity of 8. The damage in base dice is equal to the intensity of the fire. For every rolled 6, or for every success, you suffer 1 point of damage. Now, it's very specific and says that armor can protect you from fire. Uh, if you take damage to spite your armor, you catch on fire and continue to burn, meaning you suffer another attack at the start of each round. The intensity of the fire increases by one each round. If a fire attack inflicts no damage, it goes out. 
if you or a PC at engaged range uh, want to, you can try to put out the fire. This requires a successful mobility roll, which is a slow action. If you are broken by fire damage or suffered fire damage when already broken, you make a death roll every round until you die or are saved by a medical aid roll. Disease. Diseases utilize a mechanic called sickness roll. So when you are exposed to a dangerous contagion, make an opposed stamina roll versus the virulence rating of the disease. A typical disease has a virulence rating of 3. If you fail the roll, you fall sick and this has several effects. One shift after the infection, the disease breaks out. You take one point of damage. You cannot recover your health while you are sick. Make another sickness roll at the start of each shift, remembering that shifts are hours, and so it's every 5 to 10 hours, usually 6. Each failed roll inflicts another point of damage. If you are broken while sick, you must make another sickness roll after every shift, and failure means death. When you succeed at a sickness roll, you are no longer sick, and you stop rolling sickness and you recover health normally. Medical aid. If someone cares for you while you are sick, the healer can roll medical aid versus the virulence of the disease instead of you making sickness rolls. Again, successful medical aid is treated as you are no longer sick. Radiation. When you are exposed to radiation, you gain radiation points or RADs that accumulate in your body. There are boxes to keep track of your radiation. Uh, the game specifies that when you received uh, uh, RADs, you check them off, make a check mark on the box. And this is important later on because, uh, you know, the area's radiation level determines how often you get RADs. A weak radiation zone will give you uh, one RAD per shift. Strong radiation will give you one RAD per turn. Extreme radiation will give you one RAD per round. Remember our units again. Shifts are hours, 5 to 10. Turns are minutes, 5 to 10. And rounds are second, 5 to 10. Uh, every time you gain a radiation point, you roll dice equal to your total number of accumulated rads. For every success, every six in the roll, you take one point of damage. If you are broken by radiation damage, make a death roll each time you get another rad until you are removed from the radiation hotspot. As long as you remain inside a hotspot, you cannot recover health in any way. Recovery. After you leave the radiated area, you heal one rad per shift, so 5 to 10 hours. Permanent radiation. Every time you are about to heal a rad, roll a single stress die. If it shows a 1, a face hugger, the rad is not healed, but instead becomes permanent. And you mark permanent radiation by filling in the rad box fully on your character sheet. Permanent radiation can never be healed, and whenever you're encounter radiation again this counts toward your total levels from damage from subsequent effects of additional radiation exposure in the future drowning all player characters are assumed to know how to swim for the purposes of movement swimming counts as crawling it follows the same rules as crawling if you are underwater you need to make a stamina roll every round so every six seconds Roll is not an action and is made during your turn but before you perform your actions. Failure of the stamina check means that you take one point of damage. If you are broken when drowning, you make a death roll each turn until you die or someone saves you with a medical aid roll. Finally, suffocation. If your supply of air runs out, you make a stamina roll every turn or after every strenuous activity, like a roll for close combat or mobility or other uh, physical actions. Your first roll is unmodified. 
but subsequent rolls get a cumulative negative one modification. So again, it's unmodified on the first roll. On the second roll, it's at minus one. Third roll is at minus two, etc. Failure of this stamina roll means you drop to zero health and make a death roll every round until you die or you enter a pressurized area. And so these are our conditions. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.